no distance to source. We've all done it, looking high and low for our glasses only to discover them perched on our head, or looking high and low for our car keys and then finding them in our hand. Back in my musician days, I was late for a gig and was rushing to quickly get my drum set set up. I suddenly realized the mic for my kick drum was gone. I asked the bass player, Hey, Eddie, uh, have you seen my kick drum mic? His deadpan reply, What's that you're holding? Oh. It's known as a brain fart or senior moment, but I believe there's a much deeper truth about human existence hiding out behind this sometimes hilarious effect. We can get into the habit of things being difficult or complicated, and I believe it has to do with self-esteem and the ease or dis-ease with which life unfolds for us. We forget to look at the obvious, forget to pay attention to what's right in front of us. Instead, jumping to the conclusion of yet another inconvenience, irritation, or pain. It's a way to cause suffering for ourselves, and oddly, or fortunately, the cure is, again, right in front of us. The tendency is to distance ourselves from pain and suffering. We recoil even from the thought of pain, setting up a sort of chasm of attention. We tend to skip over what's happening if it gets too unpleasant or uncomfortable. My assertion is that at the moment we recoil from something unpleasant, that moment contains everything causing the unpleasantness. Another way to look at it is, within every moment of our feeling experience is woven the beingness of the universal creator. We are not experiencing life alone. There is an overarching conscious intelligence holding a field of love around and within us at all times. It is our genesis, the stuff of which we are literally made. Now as worldly experience unfolds and there is pain, we have a built-in mechanism that attempts to repel unpleasant feelings, putting us in defense mode. This mode has many flavors, from denial to persecution to grimly holding on, all of which flip our attention away from the exact thing that would calm, heal, and restore us. Now, this glitch of habitual behavior has been exploited by controllers as the false god syndrome. This is where the answer to pain, suffering, and difficulties becomes praying to God for relief, forgiveness, peace, and grace. This false god construct feeds on the negative energy we willingly offer up every once in a while doling out a little respite we identify as prayers answered. That keeps us praying and feeding the beast. In other words, the resolution of pain and suffering is over there somewhere with God, and once we've received a sufficient punishment, there will be a reward of relief. To me, this is a crime against humanity on the one hand, but on the other, is that this mechanism is simply and definitively neutralized with the awareness of source. Instead of instantly recoiling from pain and suffering, turn instead to that source of love, peace, and ease that is right beside us at all times. We have allowed ourselves to believe we deserve pain and suffering as justification for this habitual recoil effect, when in fact it is a sort of Stockholm Syndrome, of handing our personal power over to the tormentors. We are bad, and so punishment makes twisted sense. Of course, we are always bad, so punishment is ongoing, much to the delight of the gaping maw of the false god. The entire scenario of interpreting experiences as mistakes in need of punishment, or perceived defects or wrongnesses as a source of pain, all of this is a self-inflicted exercise in affliction that has nothing to do with or as antithetical to our God self. The real God is not over there. It's right here, right now, inextricably woven into every moment. We feel it as love, joy, peace, ease, comfort, and happiness because that is what we actually are. 
we pretend that what hurts are our mistakes or karma or punishments, when the only reality is love. The distance we habitually assume from our own source is a perpetuating factor of our pain and suffering. When we do heal, it is because we have somehow opened the window to source, allowing it to take away our pain, remove our suffering, and bring us peace, joy, and love. We must never underestimate how automatic and deep this habit of distancing from source is. There are many layers, many knee-jerk reactions, and perhaps thousands of justifications holding this behavior in place. By finding the eternally abiding heart of love, embracing every cell and molecule, and allowing this love to be our very first reaction to any pain, suffering, disappointment, irritation, or unpleasantness, it begins to truly heal our wounds and neutralizes the magnetic grasp of the false god. We are love. We are peace. We are joy. Anything else is a signal to return to source the eternal and infinite power of love within all life. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin, brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx, www.pureenergyrx.com.